this is a case of an elderly gentleman who presented with pleuritic chest pain, fevers, as well as new onset atrial flutter with possible ST elevation in the inferior leads or infralateral leads. As you can see in this spin echo view, there's some consolidation in the lungs with some mild pleural effusion bilaterally. But overall, the structures look good. You can see the pericardium here with some thickness present. You can see this. And if you measure this, it's a little bit more than 4 millimeter in size, which qualifies it as a thickened pericardium. When you come to the short axis view, these are the Fiesta views. You can see this wall is mo moving really well. But the intralateral and infralateral myocardium is not moving very well. And there's some hyper enhancement and brightness here, which suggests edema, usually because of the intense necrosis because of an MI. So this patient underwent a catheterization on presentation and was found to have OM1 uh, clot. However, because of his fevers and there was a concern that there's more wall motion abnormality than the vessel involvement, this MRI was ordered. So you can see, continues to have this anterolateral wall motion abnormality. The bases are contracting much better than the mid and the apex. Again, in the three chamber view, you kind of similarly see the same findings. If you come to the stir images or the T2 images, as you can see, there's increased enhancement on the anterolateral wall because of edema. However, there's a mid segment where you cannot see any enhancement. This is microvascular obstruction. You can also see that there's also pericardial enhancement. Now, this could be fluid or it could be just edema of the pericardium. You cannot be 100% sure when you're looking at it. This is pre contrast T1 map and the T1 values were elevated. They were above 1200 milliseconds here. After that, we got T2 maps. The T2 maps also showed very elevated numbers on 110, somewhere above 80, which are definitive for myocardial edema. Now you look at this lava imaging, which is like a T1 fat set imaging, where you can see the whole pericardium lighting up here. As you can see, it's lighting up here. So there's acute pericarditis going on as well. Once you come to the delayed gadolinium enhancement sequences, you can see it's almost transmural infarct or edema present with areas of no flow at all. So this is microvascular obstruction, pretty large areas of microvascular obstruction, obstruction present. Interestingly, in cases of acute MI, the edema and the delayed gadolinium enhancement may show a larger infarct size than it is. Um, this edema then resolves over time, but here you see it's even going to the inferior segment uh, as well, from anterior to inferior segment. And the wall motion corresponds that really well, as you can see in this one as well. So the base is spared. And then mid wall to almost to the apex, you can see delayed gadolinium, gadolinium enhancement with some hypo enhancement in the middle, which is uh, microvascular obstruction. Again, the same thing on the magnitude images and four chamber view. This is two chamber view. You can see subendocardial enhancement or almost transmural enhancement. 
again the same thing when you get the t2 values they're pretty high above 100 most of them and when you get this um, t1 map as you can see the t1 values on this side are above 1200 they're less over here but this is more of a global phenomena the whole myocardium has um, inflammation going on thank you very much